Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War II, World at War. It is August of 1945 in our Let's Play series. The Americans are on the verge of invading Japan, and I just wondered, do they have nuclear weapons? Because if they do, fuck! Um, fortunately, I don't think they have any air bases within range to actually hit us. Um, I don't think the B-29 can make it from Midway, even in this game. And they haven't taken any islands, so that's good. We're in the process of racing our navy back because we did discover this large American force off our coast. We'll have to see how this all plays out. Um, I haven't seen any land troops, but I'm guessing there's some back here. I just don't know what they have because their navy's been so crippled and obliterated by us. I can't imagine what they're sending all the way for some sort of Hail Mary strike against Japan. But this seems to be hard-coded because it's in, in sort of time for the Operation... Um, what was it? Ah, what was the name of the operation of the invasion of Japan? Uh, down, not Was it Downfall? Uh, in any event, we've raced reinforcements back, which were slated for the invasion of Australia. Uh, we have landed a small force on the coast of Australia, uh, largely just to kind of hopefully force the uh, Allies off guard and maybe force them to race some troops west, uh, although we don't really have huge supplies here. So supplies are going to be tricky. Uh, we do have a port, so that's good, but... Uh, yeah, that's the situation here. This guy may get killed, but if not, we'll have an SLN off force as well. Um, again, without much of the way of supply. But anyway, that's the situation there. In India, we're invading. We've kind of gotten to the Ganges, and when we're kind of pushing west here toward a new defensive line of the Allies here in eastern India on the Calcutta line, we'll call it. But we've also driven to within a reasonable distance of Delhi, the current capital, and we're attacking Bombay, the alternate capital. We may be trying to do too many things at once. This lone cavalry unit seems likely to be overwhelmed, and our lone headquarter unit's a little bit exposed there, so we'll have to see how things play out. Fortunately, all the Allied units units are level zero as far as what we've seen from their equipment so we might be able to beat them pretty easily or we might get crushed uh, Cairo almost fell last turn not quite but almost it was knocked down to a level one uh, defensive unit the fortunate thing is if they spend money to reinforce this guy he's gonna lose his experience and I think we'll probably take it next turn uh, El El Gala is still holding out against the Allies the British tank unit there took some casualties and withdrew so they may be reinforcing this turn uh, Sicily's been liberated, Italy's been liberated, France and China have fallen, and Germany's preparing at least for a, a, a feeling out of the Allied forces, uh, in, uh, in England. I'm gonna maybe try and shuttle a, a couple of units across the channel and see how things develop. I don't think it'll succeed. They've got so many air units here. They're going to overwhelm us. We're probably not even going to get a headquarters unit ashore. But it would be interesting to see if we can make a small beachhead at Portsmouth and see how things play out. They still have battleships here. They still have escort carriers uh, in the vicinity. So we're going to have to, again, be mindful of all of that uh, and see how things play out. I'm willing to lose a couple of units just to kind of test the waters. But, again, it's, it's kind of an initial experiment. Uh, meanwhile, in South America, Chile has fallen. It hasn't formally surrendered, but Santiago did fall to us. So my assumption is that they will surrender next turn, and I'm actually going to start moving my troops north to begin the invasion of Peru there as well. And that's the situation in August of 1945. So let's go ahead and jump in, let the Allies play their turn, and see what develops. So there you go, Chile surrenders. We get a little bit of money from them. Malta's hindering supplies. Crete's hindering supplies. We get that basically every day. Germany's developing level 5 tanks. That's great. Uh, Anti-submarine warfare progress is occurring. That's good, especially because we've got a bunch of destroyers being built. Amphibious warfare level 1 is also being developed. Japan's developing level 2 amphibious warfare, which will help if we ever get back down to invading our Australia. Properly, not just through Darwin. I wouldn't be surprised if the Allies get a bunch of free units for us landing in Darwin as well. We'll have to see. Cairo's reinforcing as we expected. Looks like the British pulled that armored unit out of Calcutta. I don't know where they're sending it. Bombay's reinforcing. Where are they sending these troops? All right, so that troop transport is destroyed. 
Well, we at least know there's some substantial British naval units still in the med. Do they... I wonder... It'd be really funny if the Americans actually didn't have any land forces slated for the invasion of Japan. And they just sent, like, if there's some sort of hard-coded event where it's like, send all the naval units in the Pacific, and they just all sort of go to Japan, but they don't actually have any ground units to follow that up. We did destroy two ground units near the, uh, was it near southeast of New Guinea? Uh, that were in transports, headed who knows where. The game does have a fair amount of scripting, but it still felt like we did a reasonable job of, uh, of holding them off. I mean, they really didn't get any successful amphibious assaults. The strategic bombing, meanwhile, seems to be effective in destroying a lot of these places, but it's not really doing much to hurt our income because we're making so much money because we've got Russia and all of Europe under our control. I think it would play a much larger role in this game if, for example, you had to worry about uh, not having Russia. All right, interceptors, our jets are hurting the American carrier aircraft. Oh, we just destroyed that P-51. They sent it on escort, and we destroyed it. Nice. You almost never see that, where you destroy an enemy unit that's escorting um, units. Meanwhile, the British clearly have a fair number of submarines as well. They've got uh, two subs here. Some of these guys are elite. The one thing I don't understand is I thought to get... Uh, to upgrade your units to elite, they had to earn experience, and I don't understand where they'd be earning experience from, considering they're never engaging us, unless maybe just being sitting on convoy routes counts as experience, I'm not sure. American subs here off the coast of Java. We haven't actually seen an event that causes troops to rise in Argentina, or in Australia yet. So level 2 amphibious, maybe that means we've got a better chance to, like, successfully assault a hostile target for Japan. Like, if we land on an occupied hex. But that's going to do it for their side of the turn. So we'll see if we can overwhelm Cairo here. It did upgrade itself to level 7 troops, but again, they should lose the experience that they had. We did lose one troop transport off Japan. We didn't see any enemy, uh... Yeah, these guys should be goners. All right, so Egypt falls to the Axis for a second time. So now we're going to try and drive south into the heart of the British colonial empire, although we probably should send some of these troops west, actually, to help out the uh, Italians there in Elagela who are per valiantly protecting our flank. Um, let's try and bomb these, uh, shit. Canadian destroyers here. Reinforce our escorts. Pull our torpedo boats back. Uh, meanwhile, there's a British cruiser out here. All right, air combat here. British jets intercepting our bombers as we attempt to go for this British cruiser. I didn't realize I had three medium bombers now. More interceptors though, more escorts. Jet fights over, or jet battles over the channel. We've landed in England. All right. Um. 
can we... I'm going to try and destroy this British army here. Next to Portsmouth before I attack with our tanks. More interceptors. They've got a shit ton of aircraft out here, don't they? Good thing is we destroyed at least one of their tactical bombers. Do the third Stuka, can it reach? It can. Very good. Alright, that British army should be destroyed. More escorts. He's not destroyed yet, but... Those tanks can finish him off. Shit, he can't quite get there. Shit! Ah, god damn it! I thought I made it, but apparently not. Because apparently this guy can't reach. No! Uh, enemy subs are going to kill us. I should have gone for that artillery piece. Well, this is going to be a short invasion. We'll do the one long range transport. Oh, wait, because we've got the additional capability now, now we can actually fit more troops on uh, transport ships, can't we? It's a headquarter unit, too. That's going to hurt when it gets destroyed. How much supplies is he going to have next turn? A little bit because he's in a port. Alright, we'll reinforce him to level 5, or level 10. Can we... Got him! Alright, so we destroyed another allied air unit. That'll be nice, at least. A fighter unit destroyed here north of Redding. He can't reinforce. He can't. No, he can't. He's already fought? Apparently. Oh, wait, I forgot about my paratroopers. The only question is if I actually want to send him in. All right, we'll attack that uh, artillery piece. Defensive artillery? From what? All right. So that artillery's weakened. We'll see what they all bring to bear against our Tiger and if we can hold out. They're going to have a lot of air units attacking. Going to move this fighter jet to Cherbourg. Hopefully can provide some fighter cover over the... Of the channel there. But yeah, we'll see if we can... Uh, if we can bear this whole... Why is this guy... Like, what's the point of this thing if it can't... Fly more than, like, two hexes? Like, I don't understand what this thing does. We can't even upgrade it to longer range. This doesn't make a lot of sense. Maybe this guy can fly to Liverpool and bomb them. Uh, meanwhile, let's move him into the channel as well. Trying to get them between us and the uh, amphibious vehicles. Okay, that's the situation in Germany. Let's move to South America. I think we'll actually keep him at Santiago for now. And we're going to move on Peru next. Uh, meanwhile, in India, 
the weather is clearing, which is good for us. Let's... What are these guys dug? They're only dug in once. Alright, so there's British interceptors. We do have escorts. Let's see what they do to our attack air. They do hurt it pretty modestly bad. More interceptors, more escorts. There you go. Got a nice little strike in there from those guys. We must be getting penalized because we're attacking across a river. Nice! Destroyed that American unit without losing anything of our own. So... Very nice. All right, so moving our headquarter units forward. All right, so that was a good result. Didn't quite finish off the uh, enemy there. Move them out of the road. Move them that way. All right, so we may break out here in Western India. Meanwhile, in Eastern India. So we almost took Bombay again. Again, not quite. Um, reinforce here. All right, so we're going to add more troops to the northern thrust near Delhi. These guys are probably in some trouble from a supply perspective. There's no reason to think that our supply situation is going to get any better down there. So, yeah. But we'll see. Anyway, the Indian invasion continues. Cairo's fallen. Um, the attacks on England have begun. All right, so we need to get these headquarter units ashore in England as well. This this beachhead may be snuffed out next turn. We'll see. I'm committing a lot more troops to it, but most of them are still in ports, which I think should insulate them from too much destruction. Actually, we'll go ahead and upgrade these ports as well so that if the enemy does attack them with air units that they're going to 
you know, basically suffer a bit. Also, a lot of the escorts that the enemy had, uh, or not a lot, but one of their escorts has been destroyed. So we'll see. We'll see how much they press against the beachhead and if they successfully close it or not. Uh, meanwhile, Egypt or India is done, but the front against the Americans over here is not. So I'm confused because the Americans have a bunch of ships over here, but no amphibious? Oh, shit. There's their flat tops, or at least some of them. But apparently it's raining, so I can't fly my kamikazes against them. That's great. So they got at least two escort carriers now against over here. Alright, so we got one of the escort carriers. What's their uh, fleet strength, by the way? 23 now? Um, most of these guys are in bad weather. Where some of them are. Alright, we'll knock out this American flat top. She gone. We'll go for this American heavy cruiser. Go for these destroyers. They gone. Go for this destroyer. Problem is I can't, like, these guys are retreating into rain squalls. I can't do anything against them there. So, that's a thing. I feel like I should have better visuals. against ships in my waters. Let's swap these guys out here. Hmm. So two American escort carriers are destroyed. I think we got a destroyer and we damaged more. So we'll see if they can get out. Actually, speaking of getting out, I'm going to send some of my ships here to guard against a potential breakout by these enemy ships. Wow, these guys have level 9 supply. All right, so we've taken Darwin and we're advancing inland. Reinforced, eight. You're telling me my maritime bombers can't do more than that? There's obviously more American uh, amphibs out here. I don't know where if this is it or if there's a whole bunch more. I don't know where the hell they're going either. Ah, this is kind of frustrating. All right, so Japan should be pretty safe now. Meanwhile, India, I think, is going to be ours in the next six turns or so. 
Egypt already is ours, so we might need to turn some forces west to help out over here. I didn't think about that. I was going for Kartorum. We could probably send one, like, if we build this mech up, we could probably send him down to Kartorum. But we're really going to have to see how the invasion of England goes. All right, well, we'll see how the invasion of England goes. It'll probably fail in a disastrous uh, cluster on my end, but reports-wise, I mean, Navy's on a 21-16, uh, land forces 43-64, air forces 7-16. What's national morale at? British are down to 45. The Americans are at 58. Losing carriers probably isn't super popular at home. Part of me feels like maybe just throwing more ships on transports as a decoy. Like, if they want to hit this army over here, rather than, you know, getting at the heart of the invasion, or getting at these amphibious troops, I'm okay with that. Their bombers will probably wipe it out, though. But you never know, our, uh, our fighter cover might help a little bit. Good thing is I've got enough troops that even if I lose five or six units, I'll be fine. Got 83. The British only have 43. The Americans have 64, and that's split across two theaters. So, anyway, we'll see how that plays next turn. We'll continue the slow march north against uh, Peru. And we'll see how things play out there. Paraguay. All right. So, where are we at diplomacy-wise? Still no available chits. Turkey's trying to be wooed, but... Honestly, it feels like we should switch our priorities. Um, purchase. Japan has money now. Light tanks. Tanks. I'm going to raise some armor, because I think it could play well in Australia for Japan. So we'll see how that goes. They won't be ready till early next year. Germany. I don't even know what rockets do. I don't know what they do. More medium bombers, I guess. Raise some strategic bombers too. Probably more subs, right? At least the one more. All right. He's going to do it for them. All right. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Um, it's an interesting one. We've started the invasion of England. We'll have to see how that plays out. Uh, while we've also uh, made substantial headway in India uh, with Bombay nearly being reduced and uh, moving on Delhi and uh, kind of starting to crush this allied defensive line here in the east of India. Meanwhile, we've invaded Australia and we've actually made some advances here. Although we probably need a headquarters unit to 
assist us moving much further. I think SL SNLF forces get some supply perks, but I could be wrong. That may be why they're making those advances. Uh, we'll add some additional SNL forces if they're not picked off by enemy um, subs here, moving this way. Um, and we've started the destruction, hopefully, of the American invasion fleet off of Japan. There's still five more ships, four more ships out this way. Um, we destroyed two light carriers, but that brings them down to 17 if we exclude these guys. 17, 16 over here. Wait, no. This guy needs to hopefully get repaired somewhere. 16 if you include this. Um, well, we know they've got some stuff in the Atlantic. But yeah, that's, uh, that's going to do it for this turn. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, we'll see if we can fully break through in India next turn and uh, if we can wipe out what's left of the American fleet off the coast of Japan. Until then, and it doesn't look like they've sent any troops. So it kind of looks like they were, you know, just... Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't even know. I don't know why I'm hitting sleep. Do I... There's got to be... I just don't know how... Oh, it's raining. That's why we can't do recon. Hmm. All right, well, we'll see how things go. Uh, I'll go ahead and save, and then we'll move on here in, uh, to the next episode. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Till next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.